what's going on guys welcome back to the channel i'm going to take you along for a ride today today's video it's just going to kind of be a update on where i am with the elantra n uh, what my future plans are and i was just going to talk about my experience as being a bigger guy um, in a little car i've had plenty of little cars in the past. In fact, my second car I ever owned was a 1988 Honda CRX SI, tiny little two-door. You know, being a bigger person, you never really think about what you look like to other people getting in and out of your tiny little car <laughs> until I saw a video of myself getting out of the car and it just absolutely blew my mind how tiny the car looked and how big I looked. So. It's been, uh, I've had a couple uh, other little cars. I had a uh, 2004 Honda Civic SI uh, EP3 hatchback, which is a two door, a little two door. I actually had another CRX after the first CRX. And then I had a 240SX, which was a small little two door um, car. And then, you know, once after that, I got started getting into larger cars and Accord, uh, Acura CL Type S then eventually four doors. But where all I'm going with all of this is, I'm, I'm plenty used to having small cars. This car is incredible as far as the room inside goes. I mean, really, it's mind blowing how much room is in here for how little the car looks on the outside. And so leg room is absolutely not a problem in this car, it's actually, incredible for what it is and i'll get to more on that in a little bit but um, the only thing that i don't like about it as far as being a small car is the width of the seat and the seat's very highly bolstered so i'm really like at the max of what is comfortable in this seat and at times it's not so comfortable so it's been a battle for me my previous car had a horrible see it as far as comfort went to which was a honda accord sport 2.0 lots of people say that i must have just had a faulty seat but i'm still convinced just the seat design itself again just too narrow and maybe i just uh you know i just have wider hips or <laughs> sit bones they call it if you're into cycling we'll call it where your your pressure points are on your you know where you sit down and so it just the seat on certain trips if you're going for a long distance can be a little rough not really where my pressure points more just where they touch on the outside of my thigh and that's the only otherwise my butt's fine it's just not that you know otherwise they are pretty comfortable uh they also grip a little bit tight around my you know around my ribs that really is my biggest gripe about this car it's the one reason why i might consider looking for a different car sooner than I originally anticipated. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about today and kind of where I've thought uh, I might move on if I do, and if not, what I'm going to do about it. So first we'll talk about what I've been thinking lately as far as if I did get a different car, what would I get? Um, and the first one that really I got went down the rabbit hole with and thought, yep, yeah, I'm getting this car is a Kia Stinger GT. Now, I would definitely be giving up the amazing gas mileage this car gets for that car. It'd be like going back to the Charger RT I had, but it checked off all the boxes that I was looking for. Sedan even has more usable hatch, which is amazing. It's fast, it should be faster than the, than the Elantra N. Um, it offers all-wheel drive, which I wouldn't mind going back to an all-wheel drive car for my next car. Um, I had a Mazda Speed 6 at one point, and just I do like launches in all-wheel drive cars. So it was a big consideration. I, I was pretty much all about them. They're very reasonable now. Uh, the GT2 spec comes with a bunch of luxurious stuff, like a heated second row seat and heated and cooled front seat, completely adjustable with power and all that stuff. So. I was very much into that car. In fact, an IS350 Sport just drove by. That's another really cool car that I, I like. But what I'm getting with this is I finally sat inside a Kia Stinger GT2 um, at a CarMax to see if 
what kind of space it had and it actually felt even tighter than the inside of the Elantra N, which shocked me. Um, the way less leg room front and back. I even put my seat right where I am in my Elantra N and then got behind me like I would in the Elantra and the Elantra had I have, and my knees are basically right at the back of the seat, but again, I'm six foot three, so that's completely amazing to me that I can even sit behind myself in this car. But the Stinger, I couldn't even get my legs behind the seats. My legs were just around the seats, and uh, it, it even getting in and out of that car is really crazy with the slope of the back door. So it just, as a family car, the only thing it would really be better at is the hatch and uh, the seat comfort for sure but just giving up way too much leg room for the kids. My kids are growing and that would just be a problem in like a year or two. So that pretty much ruled out the Kia Stinger. I did sit in an IS350 F Sport, really love the look of those cars, good performance, same deal, super tiny interior, way less leg room in the back. You actually, when I sat in it, it actually felt the same, like width wise and everything about the same as the Elantra, which really surprised me. I expected it to be a much wider car and it wasn't. I even thought something as crazy as like a Ford Taurus SHO. For some of you younger guys, you probably don't know much about those, but the later Model 1, so 2013 to 2019, um, were pretty good cars and fast twin turbo V6, all wheel drive, lots of luxurious amenities. But researching more on that car, it turns out that that car's even just as cramped as a Kia Stinger, which is funny, we're passing by Kia Stinger GT right now. Crazy coincidence. So anyways, I'm rambling a little bit, but um, where I'm going with this guys is I just started kind of getting to the point where I wanted to look and see what else was out there and what I might like. And I'm just gonna be honest, there is not much that I like better than this car, at least enough to switch out cars, because my only problem again is the seat. Now there is a rattle or two that are starting to pop up, but rattles, I heard the Stinger rattles, all most cars will end up rattling. The Lexus might not, but that one, again, that car is just way too small. Uh, I looked at a Lexus ES350s, but way underpowered. Toyota Avalon TRD, way underpowered. And front wheel drive without, I don't believe they have limited slips. There's really no other alternative other than a Sonata N-Line, which I did sit in one and it did actually, have a little bit less space than the Elantra, than my Elantra. That's why I kind of gave up on it, but it's still doable space where I wouldn't, uh, someone, you know, my like kids could sit behind me and not be completely squished. So, so with that car, I just need to take one for a test drive, but I just don't foresee it being nearly even half of the fun as this car. I might be wrong, but that's what the Elantra N really gives you is just an incredible, fun factor for just an incredible price. So it's really hard to even come close to it, really anything as far, I mean, the performance is incredible and it has really good features for what it is. You know, I mean, it's heated seats. It's got the full digital dash and display, which I absolutely love. You know, like I said, it's got great room. The trunk is pretty big for what it is. I mean, it's 14 cubic feet, for, so it's not that much smaller than a, just a regular mid-size car and it's considered a compact car so um, lately I've just been getting uh, a lot of compliments on the car just out of nowhere I had a guy taking pictures of uh, the car at Starbucks shout out to that guy I've seen him actually twice on one day I caught I saw him taking pictures of my car it was pretty cool waved at him and uh, it turns out that it was him it was the same guy I didn't put it together until I went back to Starbucks and talked to him. He talked to me and asked me, were you at this place? Because I took a picture of your car and I was like, wait, yes. Some people telling me they like it. And what is that? You know, what kind of Hyundai is that? So it does feel very special um, in that sense. I mean, it is a special driving experience too with this car. All signs are pointing to, there's nothing that's going to replace this and give me what I'm getting for, out of it. So my quest, <laughs> is to find a way to modify these seats. Now I know in like Australia and there might be other places that they have a comfort seat option that actually it's the only option there. They get the comfort seats with power and, and adjustability. And I think maybe even memory, I'm not sure, but 
maybe you guys can, if anyone's from Australia or Korea, do you guys get memory seats um, or are they just power? Let me know. Maybe Korea gets these seats too. I don't know. So it's either a seat replacement with OEM, if I could. I've even thought about like trying the, maybe like the N-line seats, the Elantra N-line seats. Because I don't think those are heated though. So I would have to give, give up that. The other option is going to a custom car shop. I did uh, go to a custom upholsterer and he was kind of more of an old school guy and didn't want to, there's like, I, there's no way I can match the materials or I'd have to rebuild your whole seat. There's not enough material to, to use. So he just didn't even, he didn't even want to do the job. He's, it wasn't even something he was willing to do. Cause I asked him, I'm like, well, you know, I'm not against rebuilding or building a whole new seat, but really wasn't his thing. So I think I need to go to like a custom car shop. I know I have one in mind that's pretty local to me and has done work for me in the past. My charger did an amazing job on painting the hood. So I'm going to ask them if anyone would know how to do it, they could. They're like almost uh, like bitch and rides kind of guys. They build full builds and full customization. So that's really my plans. See how that pans out. And really my conclusion is that this car, I'm just getting way too eager to get out of this car just because of the seats. So if I can figure out a way, like I said, to make it work better for me, um, then I'm going to do that and I'll share what I find with you guys as I go along that, that little journey there. So I had an entire week off from work this week and did a lot of cool adventures and took this car, you know, on different day trips places. Um, and it did amazing. I, it just, every time I drive the car, I'm like, oh yeah, this is why I, I love this car. So it's just a matter of seat comfort and hopefully I'll figure that out. There you go. All right. So I rambled on guys, more of like a vlog style video this time, but I just wanted to give you guys an update to what's going on. Um, I definitely want to do some kind of intake soon. So hopefully I'll, uh, have a video showing you guys what I decided, which one I decided to get and uh, install and all that good stuff. So look forward to making that. So. As always, like and subscribe. Uh, until the next video, guys, peace out.